Welcome to Aisle. In this video, we'll cover how to use Aisle in labs and classroom settings and some tools and techniques that can help you use it effectively. Now, one of the, one of the first things you want to do is make sure that students are engaged in class discussions uh, to make sure that they're learning the material and not just passively clicking through the content that you've prepared for them. Uh, one thing that can help to do this is when you introduce an activity, give a little bit of background on that activity and then ask them some discussion questions about it. So for example, if I'm doing a data analysis uh, lab, I might have them read the description of the data set or I'll go over that description with them. And then when I've had a little bit of time to think about it, ask them some discussion questions. So for example, I might ask them, um, are there any issues in how the data was collected? Um, what relationships might we expect to see between the variables in the data? Or um, what population could we generalize the results of an analysis to? And when they're all warmed up and ready to start thinking about the, the main body of questions, you can have them then go through those questions. And if it's a long lab, I would tend to break those up into chunks. So maybe chunks of three to five questions that the students can work on. Um, and as they're going through, um, you'll have them, after every group of, of questions, discuss it either in small groups or uh, as a class. And those discussions give you a chance to address any student misconceptions, um, talk about the student responses, uh, and get them engaged again in thinking about um, the, the content and the material that you want them to learn. And you can do this in a kind of variety of different ways. You could have them work individually and then discuss in small groups. Or you can have them work individually, discuss with a neighbor, uh, and then discuss as a whole class. Um, you can have them work in small groups and talk about it as they work. There's lots of different approaches that you can try, but the important point is getting them engaged in the material. And as they're working on these questions, I would circulate around the room, field any questions that the students have, either on aisle or on the subject material, and also um, get a sense of what their understanding is on the content. And you can also look through the responses that the students have submitted as they're doing the questions. And that'll give you a sense of what the students' answers are and also uh, any misconceptions that they have. So that you have some talking points ready when you wanna bring it back for a full class discussion. In the next section, we'll just have a look at how you actually look at those student answers in aisle. Now to see student responses for a specific question, click the answers button that's attached to that question. The number next to the word answers there is the number of answers that have been submitted. And the bar below helps track student progress, which we'll uh, talk about in a bit. On the left, you can see all of the individual answers. And on the right, you can see a visual summary of these answers. If you want to see which students submitted which response, you can click the show extended button that's at the bottom right there. For privacy purposes, I'm not actually going to show you the names of students that were in this class, but if you're not showing this screen to students, you can click that Show Extended button for yourself. Now, one thing that you might need to do first is filter student responses. So if you have multiple cohorts or you have different lab sections, you may want to select just one cohort and display only those answers. You can also display the most recent answers by choosing only the last hour or the last day uh, etc. You can also filter responses by searching uh, in the search bar below here, which is especially useful if you have text-based answers and you want to find only the answers that contain some specific word or phrase. One thing to note with student answers here is that uh, students can typically submit multiple responses and by default I'll displays only the most recent answer for each student, which is indicated by this text below the graphic here. To instead see all of the answers for each student, you can click that text so that it says instead, include all answers for any student. Now finally, let's talk about those visualizations that go along with the answers. For text-based questions, like the one we're looking at right now, word clouds can give you a sense of the common words in student responses. And if you click an individual word in the cloud, you can see all of the responses that contain that word. For numeric responses, instead, uh, a table shows the most common responses, and a histogram shows a distribution of the responses. Looking at student responses can be a good way of figuring out what students' understandings and misconceptions are 
but it can be hard to tell when students are just really lost on a topic because they might not even submit an answer to those questions. To try and figure this out, you can look at the student responses to those feedback buttons where they have the chance to tell you if they're very confused on a topic and they can give some specific details on their confusion. Now to see student feedback, you click the responses button there. So far we've covered uh, how to look at student answers and feedback. And the other thing that you'll want to do is track student progress to help time the activities as you go through the lab. To track student progress on an individual question, you can look at that bar below the answers button that's attached to the question. The fraction of that bar that is blue represents the fraction of active users that have submitted an answer, and the fraction that is yellow, orange yellow, is the fraction of active users that are currently working on the question. Another way of tracking student progress is to use the instructor panel. And you can open the instructor panel by clicking that orange arrow on the right of the screen there. The green progress bar at the top of the instructor panel um, shows the, the progress bar for the whole class. And bars for individual questions show progress for active users on those questions. Uh, while the time next to each question shows the average time it took users to answer that specific question. So that wraps it up for our video on how to use IELT in labs and in class activities. For more information and tutorials, you can visit IELTDocs.com.